Today we're talking to head coach uh, Neil Sorval ahead of the very busy Christmas uh, period. Uh, Neil, first of all, let's look back at um, our last action. Uh, very exciting uh, game on Saturday against AFC uh, Fylde. And there's lots to talk about in terms of that game, but in the end, it, it really did come down to two fantastic goals. Yeah, um, bit of a it became an end to end game, didn't it? Particularly um, in the second half. Um, I, I thought first half we had a we controlled a lot of the game up to the goal um, without creating too much. Um, so disappointed to go one behind, but I think that then as the half progressed, a couple of decent chances going into half time where we should have realistically levelled it up. Um, so disappointed really to been to have been behind at half time. Um, hey, they are they always carry the threat. You know they they've got pace in wide areas and and, and a decent quality uh, going forward. So they're always going to carry a threat, which they, which they showed. Um, but then yeah, two magic moments from from the magic man, wasn't it, to uh, to get us over the line. So yeah, delighted for him. Both goals were magnificent goals and there aren't too many players who could have scored either of those two goals. But the free kick for me, there's very, very few players who have the capability of performing that skill to get the ball over the wall. And it did go over the wall and so low into the bottom of the goal. Yeah, it was, it, they're the hardest ones, aren't they? Right on the edge of the box, the, the up and down. Like you say, not many players have got that technique. Uh, I thought it was a bit close for him, to be honest. Um, so hey, when he did it, a hey, fair player to him. But we've seen him score one a bit further out, haven't we? A similar one uh, at Halifax, which was an incredible free kick last season. So yeah, um, magic moments, uh, winners the game. And in terms of uh, AFC Fylde, they played very well as they did against us on Bank Holiday uh, Monday. But th they remind me a little bit of, of us in the first couple of seasons in that the, they're playing well, but they're, they're, losing, they're losing out very tight games. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, you, you see a lot of the post-match stuff and they're talking about um, the chances, they've oppo the, the opportunities they've had that they've not converted. Um, yeah, we have been similar ourselves, uh, guilty of that. Um, but a big, the, the big thing I think for us this season is as much as you want to play great football and be expansive, it's the goals against um, that's improved significantly, significantly for us this season. Um, obviously, we still want to do better with that. I think we still can do better, but that for me is the, the real game changer. And that's, I think, where, where they're struggling. They're conceding one too many goals. And we know ourselves last season, I think we conceded 80-odd goals last season. Um, it's really difficult to score, to have to score two and three every game because it's just, it's, it's not sustainable. Um, so with our numbers being better this this season, then gives us that platform and makes it that that bit easier to to get points out of games. And Fylde created a few opportunities, but the big one for them was Nick Horton's shots, and Lewis Baines uh, has done a magnificent uh, job there. And Ethan Ross has also made it a very uh, decent save and had a very good game. Yeah, pulled off some good saves when we've needed him to. Um, Saves you'd expect him to make, to be honest, looking back on it. Um, but yeah, Baines, he done really well with the with the um, goal line clearance. But I think, you know, looking back on it, the opportunities came from us being a little bit sloppy and a little bit too open at times. Um, I think there was a, a period of 15 minutes, second half, where the, the game was just going end to end. And, um, we you know, we nearly got caught out uh, in them moments. Now, it's the... The busy Christmas uh, schedule, um, and we have to look at Christmas and New Year as a as a, a package of three, really, in terms of the planning and the schedule for the for the players. Starting with Bromley, what's going to happen in terms of the the preparation for going getting down to uh, to Bromley, executing the uh, the match, and then and then getting back. Yeah, so we'll um, we'll train tomorrow. Obviously, we've prepared for. Started the preparations for Bromley training today. We'll train tomorrow, um, as we normally do. Um, we'll travel down on on um, Friday afternoon to the game. Um, obviously, we will be late back after the game um, on Friday evening. So the lads will be in. They'll be off Christmas Eve. 
which is the Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, and then they'll be in training on Monday, Monday morning, Christmas Day for the um, for the in preparation for the Halifax game. And the training on Christmas Day, I don't don't think it's the first time we've trained on Christmas Day, but um, certainly the the training schedule is is getting more stringent as we develop as a full time club. Yeah, it's look, it's probably it's just unfortunate, isn't it, the way the games fell on the twenty third so close to um, to Christmas Day. Um, we felt, you know, if they didn't come in and train on. Christmas Day, then they'd be just turning up at Halifax on um, the Tuesday morning, isn't it? Um, and we've not seen him for a couple of days, so I, we want to be as professional as possible. Um, unfortunately, that means training for an hour or so and, and doing our preparation on, on Christmas Day. And we really have reaped the benefits of the, uh, the new training regime this uh, season. Increasingly on our post-match interviews, players are talking about... Uh, about we've been working on that in in training that's that's happening a lot more than it used to it's just time isn't it, it gives you more time to to spread it across you know it's really tough when um you're a part-time team in this league we've been there ourselves whereby if you play on the tuesday night um you've got what an hour and a half on a pitch on a, on a thursday evening to do your preparation for the game and realistically um, you're still within 48 hours of the Tuesday night game. It should be classed then as a re recovery session, which, it, to be honest, in a part-time environment, we never did that. But if we're following the model that we're following this season, you know, within 48 hours of the game, so when the players come in on a Monday morning after a Saturday, it's still in effect a, re a recovery session. Bromley on Saturday, uh, 5:30 p.m. kickoff because the game is live on TNT Sports. They're second in the league going uh, ever so well. They've got a fantastic uh, home record. And they're the only team, of course, who've, who've beaten us at the J. Davidson uh, Stadium. And when they came to us um, back at uh, the beginning of uh, September, they'd had a little bit of a niffy start. Yeah, they had. Um, they hadn't started great. Um, I think back and I think maybe the game prior to us did they win and that got them that got them up and up and running they've been on a great run haven't they um since then um so yeah they, they've got themselves you know up in a in a fantastic position it shows what's capable even after such a poor start just the two defeats uh at down in uh, greater london on their own artificial uh pitch and the scoring at an average of about two a game they're conceding about uh one a game um it's going to be a very tough encounter and it's certainly going to be very different uh, conditions wise than it was last season when it was 38 degrees yeah it was a tough one wasn't it uh, last season lots of um, drink breaks throughout the game yeah re really difficult um, conditions that and the, and the heat just seems to radiate back up off them types of pitches doesn't it um, so yeah uh, it'd be nice to go the you know, with more moderate temperature, if you like. Um, obviously, winds. The winds always been the biggest factor, isn't it, in, in terms of destroying a game or you know ruining ruining a game. Um, you're probably happy to play in in, in other conditions apart from that. Um, but yeah, look, going to be a really tough one. They go, like you said, they're going really well. The numbers are good. Um, they're a team who, how can I say it? Um, doesn't need a lot of the ball to win, which they've predominantly done throughout the season. You know they're not a team who um, dominates possession very often, um, but they're still capable um, of winning games. And the artificial pitch, clearly, we would prefer to play on uh, grass, but maybe Saturday before uh, Christmas, we're almost certain the game is going to be on with an yeah. artificial uh, pitch. So maybe there's some some plus points there. Yeah, and and we're comfortable with it. We you know um, obviously at Edgerton where we train, we've got access to grass pitches and got access to a really good um, 3G. But at the minute, it's just impossible to get on the grass. I think we've not been on there for a month now, so um, the lads will be. Uh, used to the surface and, and we're more than capable of playing some good stuff on it like we have done you know the previous seasons when we've played against them there 
And we're due a result against uh, Bromley. We've never beat them here at the J. Davidson Stadium. The only time we have won was the very first time the two clubs met back in November 2015. Once again, in front of the live uh, TV uh, sports cameras, that was a, a lunchtime uh, kickoff. But probably our return of points um, doesn't really match up with the performances because we've actually played quite well in some of those games. Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, the standout one is, is the game here this season. Um, we've probably done enough to win that or at least get a point out of it. Really, a bit of sloppy play at the end where we've got counter-attacked on and they've scored. We know we've lost possession in our defensive third and they've scored. Um, I think the standout one was... Um, a couple of seasons ago where we, they beat us 1-0 at home on a, on a Saturday I think they were going out on the Christmas do and um, we had numerous chances second half I think Ampo Blaise won over from about three yards um, and they, they got out of jail on that one but yeah that just seems to be the way um, like I said they don't you know we tend to dominate possession and, and get sucker punched so hopefully that won't happen on on Saturday and then we've got the double header against FC Halifax Town on Boxing Day and uh, New Year's Day, both the uh, 3 p.m. kickoffs. Uh, and FC Halifax Town going well this uh, season, like Bromley, like ourselves, uh, looking for a place in the playoffs. And of course, we've recently played them in the FA uh, Trophy and come out the right side of that with a, a really good, um, full of heart performance to win it on penalties and, and make progress to the uh, the fourth round against Kidderminster Harriers in the middle of, uh, of January. Um, but you've got to give credit to Halifax Town. They are they're going very, very well. They're very solid defensively. Yeah, I think you go from Bromley are the, are the joint second best defence in the league. Halifax are the, are the best defence in the league. So um, two teams who are set up well, well organised defensively in terms of um, the structure in that defensive shape. We've seen that on Tuesday night um, for 25 minutes. I think it was a very cagey game, wasn't it? Not much in it the first 25 up until the sending off. Um, both teams kind of finding each other out. Um, so we'd expect two games very similar um, against ha uh, Halifax over the, the Christmas period. Um, hey, we come out the right end of that last year with, with four points, didn't we, from the two games. So hopefully we can do that again. And they've done very well under uh, Chris Millington, who I often think is a is a manager and a coach who doesn't get the full credit that he uh, deserves. Since he's been management manager, Halifax have done very well. They've won the FA Trophy, and he also did a really good job as uh, as uh, head coach under uh, under Pete Wilde. So they're a team to be respected, and uh, unlike most of the, the management teams in in this league, very very good. Yeah, they look, they're, they're, like I said, touched on earlier, they're a tough team to play against. Um, they've had good success, haven't they, over the years? Um, Chris, when he's when he's been with Pete, um, I'm, sure, I'm sure he had the opportunity to go into the football league with him. Um, but he's he's out on his own now as head man, and he's done well with it, hasn't he? You know, FA Trophy last season, they're up there this season. Um, so yeah, he's um, he's one to be respected, definitely. 